uh, do number eight. Suggest that you, before you even write the number down, you have a parentheses. Okay, the parentheses are very important because they make you more likely to do things in the correct order, less likely to make mistakes regarding especially negative numbers and that kind of thing. So we put an empty set of parentheses and then inside the parentheses put the thing we are substituting, negative three. Then we're more likely to be successful. So um, Negative two times negative three is positive six, right? Negative six. Six times five? Six plus five? Minus six, what is it? Well, negative two times negative three is positive, right? So this is positive six plus six. Right? And we're, we're adding negative two times negative. The thing we should not have happen is we wind up multiplying by six, five times, whatever that is. Because it started out as five minus this number, whatever that thing is, so I shouldn't be multiplying by anything. It should be adding or subtracting. So that confusion happens a lot. Especially when we distribute a negative, because you don't think about the fact that you're adding a negative. That's a subtraction. So five plus six, that gives us 11. If we do it for negative two, that would be plus negative two times negative two, five plus four, five plus positive four, that gives us the nine, and so on, okay? Can I say and so on, or is that too specific? And so on's okay? Yes. Okay. Um, then we just wanna keep track of all that. We got 11, we got nine, we got five, of course, we put in zero, one and negative one. And then we'll just plot those points, okay? Uh, this guy right here doesn't quite fit, but we can make it fit if we want to. We could just go one more, right? Let's talk about this point again. We talked about it last time, but what does this point represent? What does this point mean about this function? Almost just one word off, negative, right? Yeah. Put in negative three, and you got 11. That's it, that's what that point represents. That's what any point on the graph represents. This went in and this came out, okay? Negative uh, two, nine, also representing that negative two went in and nine came out. What if negative two and a half goes in? What's your guess, or you could figure out exactly what it is? What if negative two and a half went in there? What do you think would come out? Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think if I put in negative two and a half that I would get out zero? by looking at the points that we've already plotted. It doesn't seem to fit the trend of the outputs we've been finding. Do you think a five would come out of there? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe 10.5? Maybe 10.5. Seems like a guess that kind of makes sense, kind of fits the data. What do you think, Seth? Oh, never mind, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. Maybe 10 exactly, maybe nine and a half. Like in that region, that would be believable. I would believe you if you told me uh, that that was the output. If you told me that the output was negative three, that when I put in negative two, I get out negative three, I would hesitate to believe that. It seems unbelievable, given the two points that I just found. It seems even more unbelievable if we plot more points that we already found, like zero, five, three, four, five, four, two, one, four, three, negative. Now it would be really hard to believe that at negative 2.5, negative three is the output. That would be really hard to believe because all of these points seem to be in a straight line. 
Anybody answer the question, what is a graph exactly? Like, what is the shape a graph made of? Data, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's not so much data. Data is uh, like a real world thing where you go out and collect it and say, such and such a person said such and such a thing, or this person it was this age, was this height. And we actually get data. This, this isn't so much data as a function, which might represent some data. But this function is perfect. Like data can be kind of vary a little bit. This is a, a perfect function. When if I go to draw this line like this in between all these points, the point that I was trying to make last time was what is that graph, that line made of? Trillions of little points. Exactly, trillions of little points. Trillions. Let's do it to the side. Okay, so yes, it's made of trillions and trillions and trillions and an infinite number of points. Okay, so what we're drawing, this line, is not, it's not exactly a line. It's not just a line that we're drawing. It's really a guess at where all of the other points will come out, right? If I were to plot all of these trillions of points, and you know, here and there and everywhere, and just take a nice sampling of lots of different inputs and find all their outputs, eventually all those dots would be so many and so close together that they would look like a line, right? And if we could plot all of the infinite number of points, it would be a solid line. There would be no gaps in between any of the points, okay? So that's why, since we don't have time for graphing an infinite number of points, we then say this line will swallow up all of those points. It will capture them all. They will all, if I, play, if I plot them now, land on that line, okay? Make sense? It's really important. If that part is clear, the rest of the stuff that we do with graphs will be much easier. If we understand that it's made up of trillions and trillions and trillions of points, there's trillions of points just between here and there. Just that little space. There's trillions of points, right? Because there's an infinite number of points, so I can squeeze trillions of points in between any two points that I want. Right? And if we can understand that, if that's fluent to us, then it makes the rest of the stuff about graphs that much easier. All right? Okay. How was that, Jerry? Does that make sense? Okay. Make sense to everybody else? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? What do I do? Uh, you can hang on with the, and there's a box back there for the egg, and there's a, no, 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 hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and there's a small box there for the Okay. Up and down. Okay. If there is a point when, like, we're about to pass out the test. Um, okay, so we're going to fill in, oh, I changed the table. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. What did, uh, I mean, you did the right one. Let me fix this one so it looks like what you did. First one. Thank you. Need what? Yeah. Almost there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the, and there's only four, right? There's only four of them. Yeah. What's this first one? Negative two, two, negative one, zero, zero one. one. Okay. Negative two, logged in for x into this function. Remember, really, x is in a set of parentheses. It would just be redundant to write them right now. But let's realize that it's there, and let's be redundant. Let's write down the parentheses, and we'll plug in the number for the parentheses. And we'll make sure that we do things in the right order. We make sure that the negatives go where they need to go if there are negatives involved. This means I'm going to multiply a number by itself. What number am I going to multiply by itself? Negative. Negative 2. Negative 2 times itself. 4. four. Positive 4. Positive, positive, positive. positive. Negative times negative <laughs> is positive. Okay, remember this is plus whatever this is because this is subtracting. Adding the opposite. So what do we get? Plus, plus what? Four. Plus what? Four. Plus four. Negative two times negative two. 
happens to be the same as, as the first one. One, so we got nine. Oh. Switch colors, negative one. Parentheses squared, minus two times parentheses, plus one, just say parentheses instead of x. Now negative one in the parentheses, multiplying something by itself, that thing that we're multiplying is negative one, negative one times itself would be positive one. We're adding whatever we get here, negative two times negative one, Positive two, one, we get four. Uh, zero, it's too easy to even do the work for because we plug in zero for the x's. We get zero, minus zero, plus one. So we get one. And lastly, one squared minus two times one plus one. One squared is one minus two plus one. One, what do we get? Zero. Zero. One minus two is negative one plus one more, back up to zero. Negative two, nine. Negative one, four. Zero, one. One, zero. Well, I can reasonably draw a shape like this in between all these two, or all, two, all of these points. Now we have to ask ourselves, what's going to happen as I plug in another input? It curves again up, up well, this way. Well, not like a, it curves like a little bit, not like a full U. Like it's not going to be a full U. Well, curvy. I don't know. Oh, that's a fair point. We don't know. How can we get to? No, how can we plug in, plug in, another, in, number? Plug in other numbers, right? And I haven't, I haven't really asked you to plot them, so just kind of do them. Uh, like, it wouldn't be too hard to do, like, because I'm going to get a good idea. If I go right next to this one, I might not really get a good look at what's happening in the long run. So maybe I'll just step out here to, to a three or four, right? So I'll just go ahead and do four. Four squared. Minus 2 times 4 plus 1. We got 16 minus 8 plus 1. What's that? Mm -hmm. It's a 9. So uh, that was 4, 2, 3, 4, and I get 9. So the points do start to, the y values, the outputs do start to get bigger than 0. So we could connect that to. If we want to figure out if we should go down like this, well, if your graph goes down on the other ends, I'm not expecting you to plot tons and tons of points. As we learn more about these functions, we should know that the numbers that you get, so where this graph goes to depends on what kind of out inputs and, and then outputs. outputs we get. What are the outputs doing? Are we going to get negative outputs again at some point when we put in a really big number for x? What do you think? Put in a really big number. Imagine that you're putting in a big number for x. What kind of number do you think we get? Like a big one or a tiny one? Imagine you put 10 in there. Imagine you put 100 in there. Imagine you put 1,000 in there for x. What do you think will happen? You're going to get a big number? You're going to get a number that's close to zero? You're going to get a negative number? If you're not sure, then go ahead and find out. Plug in 10. 10 is really easy, right? 10 squared is 100. Minus 2 times 10, that's 20. So you got 100 minus 20, that's 80. Plus 1, that's 81. Right? That's pretty big. Yeah. When we put in 10, we get up to 81. So you think your graph's going to go up. Yeah? Yeah. And on this side, well, if I put in negative 10, it's going to be a lot like positive 10. Right? Even when I put negative 10 in here, what do I get? Positive number. When I square a number, I always get what kind of number? Positive, always my square. So this will be positive 100. Uh, put negative 10 in here, now this is plus 20. Instead of minus 20 like it was with positive 10, so that's even bigger. Plus 1, so we're at 121. So yeah, that's going to be big. Okay. Right. This graph will keep going up. It's got to go up so that it can hit, once it gets to 10, it's got to be at 81. 
And I'm sure after it gets past 10, it's got to be higher than 81, and this keeps going. Seth, is that like a question? Um, I have a prediction. Oh, you have a prediction? Yeah. So it's pretty, it's pretty like obvious prediction, but wouldn't it be like, well, pretty much what I'm trying to say is if it's a positive number, it would be shooting up, and if it was like a big negative number, it would be shooting down. Cause Why do you think it would be shooting down? Because the negative is on the bottom, the positive bottom. on the top. Bottom of what? Of the graph. Oh, down here is negative. Yeah. If you put in a negative number, it's gonna go down. you get out a negative number. Because you're asking if, like, if you put in like a positive 100, you're asking if it would go up. Yeah. And it would go way up because it's on the positive side of the graph. Okay. And if you were to put a negative number, like 100, it'd be going down. Because it's, because it's negative. Yeah. Now, okay, so let me just clarify. When you say it's going down, what do you mean it's going down? You put a negative 100, and then what, what happens that it's going down? Uh, your graph would be going down. So like, instead of being like that, yeah. it'd be like. You're thinking on the negative side, it'll go down. Yeah. Down, like, mm -hmm. so. So we talked about putting in negative numbers, that would be as we go this direction, right? What does it mean that the graph goes down as far as I meant your arrows would be going down. Right. The arrows are going down, but really, what's the graph made of again? A million, the trillion of trillions of dots. Quadrillions of dots. And what does each dot represent? Uh, input, output? output? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to throw set that, and then all what color I'm going to show you. That all green. Okay, so yes, every point represents an input output pair. So the fact that you're guessing that it will go down, you're saying that if I input a negative number, I will go down. Output, output. Yeah. The output, the output will, output will be, be yeah, it will be negative. So you're guessing the output will be negative. Yeah. Okay. So good. You guess. But let's think about this. When you put a negative number, let me ask you, let's talk about a positive number. Let's say you put a thousand in for x. Alright? Well, how's a thousand compared to one? Pretty big difference. It's a lot, lot bigger, right? Because what do I put a thousand in there? What will I get right here? Do you want like an exact answer? Yeah, just this part right here. Just this part right here. Um so Right, 2, 000, minus 2,000, yeah. right, minus 2,000. What do I get when I put 1,000 in here and square it? 10,000. Huh? 10,000. What? 100,000? No. A million? Yes, a million. A million. When you square 1,000, you get a million. Okay, let's think about this now. Let's go back down through the, the terms we just found. A million. What did we say this was? 2,000. We're subtracting 2,000 from a million. This is, wait. Okay, so we're subtracting 2,000 from a million. Is that... Are we taking a lot away from a million when we take 2,000 away? If you had a million dollars and you lost 2,000, would you be too bummed out? No. Not really. Not too bummed. Not really. No. No. And then, if, and then if somebody gave you a dollar after you lost 2,000, would you, you, you care about a dollar? Thanks, man. Okay. Thanks, man. I mean, I'll take it or whatever, but I mean, it doesn't really make a big difference. Okay? Now, what about when that, when that number is not 1,000, but it's a million? Like, you put in a million. It's a lot. Right? Well, this is still one plus one. Big deal. This is what negative two million. But what's this when you square a million? Oh my gosh. Um, one trillion. Oh, well, that, that was awesome. Oh, oh. Round two. Oh. Round two. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like the series shows so and the birds are flying. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh can I go check it out? Oh, no, 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 can I go no, no, save no. it? Can I go save it? What do you think? I'm gonna let you, you run outside CPR. and look it up. You get a CPR. I will not crush its rib cage. Shh. <laughs> We're talking here, okay? Life is happening outside. Circle of life. Life is happening. <laughs> circle of life. <laughs> 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 it's just standing there. Oh my god, that's horrible. Wow, that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, we're squaring a million. A trillion. Yeah. Nope. It says, I typed that in here and it says yeah. 1.2 trillion. It's one point trillion. Ten trillion. Ten times 10 to the left power. It's like, what happened? What's times 10 to the left power? Alright, it's just like, it's away. You did it wrong. It should be like, 12, not for 11. No, okay. A million's dying. Yeah. 
Oh wait, no, no, no. Never mind. I did a million times. I did wrong. You're right. Million times is a million times. Right? Oh, if you did a million times, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred thousand. Okay, let's see this. <laughs> well, it's gonna be a one with twelve zeros. Which is. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I did it right. I did it right. <laughs> you can have a class pay. Yeah. You have a class pay. Not having a class pay. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking. <laughs> All right. I, I, I see 10. I know how to give CPR. They gave one to us. Oh, bird is fine. It's standing and it's just complaining. Okay? It's just complaining. <laughs> it's my head. It's raining. Come on. I got a concussion. All right. You're doing pretty well. A bird flew into the window. It's kind of distracting. Just pay attention. <laughs> what you get is one of 12 zeros, which is not a, a thousand or a million or a trillion. Or a billion? No, it is a trillion. Did you say trillion? I, I said that. You said trillion. I said trillion. I got mixed up. Yeah, a trillion. It's a trillion. It's not a thousand or a million or a billion. It's a trillion. It's a one of twelve zeros. We square a million, which is big, but but then when we square it, we get a trillion. That's, that's a lot. And what was this? This is minus two million. Still it's a trillion compared to two million. Big. It's way bigger. Right. So isn't squaring a number doesn't make it very big? Yes. Okay, so now to the point of what happens when you put a negative number in there. What happens oh. when you put a negative one million in there? What do you get? Negative trillion. Negative trillion? Oh, negative million, million squared. Oh, trillion. 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 Negative million times negative million. That's what happens when you square it, right? Yeah. A positive trillion. So whether you put in positive million or negative million, you still get a positive trillion. So it still goes up. Well, it will still be going up. Well, then how do you make it go down? Graphs do what they do. The functions have the outputs that they have. The negative part of it that you're thinking of is it's going to the left. Right? We're putting in negative numbers for x. But in this kind of a function, in, a, in what's called a quadratic function, a, a one that has the highest power of 2, the, the outputs will be positive at some point. Sometimes you can get some negatives, but when the number is far enough negative, and the number's far enough negative, big enough negative, you're going to still just get the function's going to be worth some big positive number. Because squaring some number always makes it positive. And the square number is the biggest number when x is a big number. Now, if x is like 0.1 or, or 1 or 2, that could make a difference. But when the, when the x value is very big, then that x squared number is going to be the biggest one. Whatever it does, that's the direction that the outputs are going to go. The outputs are going to tend to go towards positive values when x is very large. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But we're thinking about the right things. We're thinking about when you put this in, what will you get out? Not what does the graph look like. Not what is the shape of the graph. Not what's the name of the shape of the graph. Not anything but when I put this in, I think this is what's going to come out. That's what we need to think about. When we think about a function, whether we think about the function as an equation, or a table, or a graph. Think about when I put this in, what will I get out? Okay? So we did all that. Got a good picture of the graph. Next question. Number two. Can we just teach the bird to peaches? Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, my God. You know, uh, you there's lime trees, lizard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same as peaches. Tends right. to we should feed the bird to it. Yeah. Okay, so, so now we're going to go on to number two. <laughs> all right. So we're going to simplify the expression, or in other words, collect like terms. Do we need to know what like terms are? Well, yeah, we do, but I don't know. Oh, never mind. I didn't get this one. Yep. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Would it be negative 2x or er, cubed for the first one? Yes, yeah, so we got an x cubed term here and an x cubed term here. I will go into more detail in just a minute, but we can only add or subtract terms that have the same variable to the segment exponent. Very base level understanding. At least I won't add things together that I'm not supposed to if I remember that. So 3x cubed minus 5x cubed, they're the same thing. They're apples versus apples. I have three apples, I take away five apples, I have negative two apples. Negative two apples. Okay. Let me move on to oranges. Are there any other, quote, oranges? No. 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 So we only have five of those, 5x squareds. Negative nine. Negative nine. I was going to go bananas. Watermelon. And that's it. 
There are no more like terms. There's no more combining to do. There's no more simplification that can happen. Okay. Let me reiterate, okay, because this is very important. At least don't try and add apples and bananas or apples and oranges. They don't go together. They don't collect. Okay? And then be able to say, oh, I have five and five apples and three oranges, so I have eight. I can't even finish the sentence because they're two different things. So there's not eight of them. They're two different things. So let's look at a simple example, like um, x squared plus x cubed. Can these be added together? No, they're not like terms. Okay. Can someone explain to a fifth grader or I guess maybe a pre-algebra student, somebody who actually knows what a variable is and what exponents are. Can you explain it in the simplest way possible some, some reason why these can't be added together? Yeah? They're, uh, uh, one of them is uh, cubed, another one is squared. Okay. Those don't go together. And why does that matter? I gotta have, I, we got to build the concept of what is the cubed and what is the squared. Uh, and for the squared, you go x times x, okay. and the cubed, you go oh. x times x times x. Oh, I should have done it the other way. x times x and x times x times x. Okay. So, why can't they? Maybe? You have to multiply them to get them to be all in one number. The problem with trying to explain why you can't do this is because you can't do this, right? So how do I explain something that is impossible? So here's how we'll explain it. Usually what we're trying to make happen is make this equal to what? What do you think people normally write? If they're going to combine these, what do they normally get? X to the 6. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, why, why not x to the 6? You know? But usually x to the 5th. We're, we're already doing it wrong, so why not x to the 6? Why not multiplying it together? It's already nonsense, right? Why not a different kind of nonsense? But the thing we have here on the left is adding the product of 2x's plus the product of 3x's. On this side, what we have is 5x's multiplied together. Okay. If we try to add x squared and x cubed and get x to the fifth, we have essentially taken this addition and traded it out for that multiplication, which is impossible. You can't, there's no math trick for magically changing addition into multiplication. So those things don't add together. They're apples and oranges. They are in different dimensions. Did I show you that picture? Of different dimensions, right? X is the length. If X is the length, then how can we show X squared? This is the area of a square, that is X on both sides. And how can we show three dimensions? Uh, a cube that is x by x by x. X, x, x. Different dimensions. Cannot be added together. Couldn't be more different. And just so that we don't get confused, it doesn't mean that x cubed always represents a volume of a box. But it could. And if it did, then x squared would represent the area of a piece of paper that's a square. And x to the first would just be the length on one side of that square, on one side of that cube. So what is it we should take away from all this discussion here? That, that x2 does not equal x3. Well, they can't have them. You can't add them. They're not what you call Apple and orange, but the, what is the term that we use to say that you can't have it? Yeah, they're not. Right? They're not. Oh, God. You okay? No, I saw like corner of my eye. It's just like right there. Oh, come with me. <laughs> All right. If we had trouble with this. I was grading the homework reviews from last time. We were having trouble with this. That's why it's here again. So we're going to do it again to uh, really hope that it sinks in. Here we're going to have a very similar problem, but we just have one step before the combining of like terms, right? What is that we're going to do before that? Distributive, distributive properties. So we're going to distribute into these parentheses a what? 5. 5x Five. Five plus what? 15. 15. Okay. And into these parentheses, we're going to distribute what? Negative 3. Negative 
negative, so we get negative 6x six 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 plus. plus, very good. 3x to the second power. 3x to the 3x squared. 3x squared. Yeah. If you're wondering how you can tell, what does x squared mean? x times x. So look at, let's look at this guy. There's a negative 3. It's coming over here. It's getting multiplied by this negative x. So we can keep, take care of the neg negative by saying what's going to be positive. After that, what do we have? We have 3x. What does 3x mean? Three times x, right? Three times x times x. What's that? X squared. There's the long way of writing x squared. X squared means x times x. So that's x squared. Even though it's three times x times x, it doesn't matter. There's the three part. It's multiplied by an x, multiplied by an x. We can write this the short way with x squared. Now we look for like terms, and if you like, which I do starting with the highest power of x. 3x squared. 5x, yes? Minus 1x. Minus 1x. Plus 15. Plus 15. Also,